Hi everyone, it is time for our November book of the month. Looking forward to hearing what you chose and oh, it was some hard choices this month. I hope that you guys stick around and join me. Hi everyone, I'm Nancy and welcome back to my channel. Oh my gosh, I am so excited to see you guys. It means so much to me that you are able to take a few minutes out of your day to spend with me. It means more to me than I can ever let you know. I appreciate you guys so much. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you're new to my channel, I hope you would take a second and just hit that little red subscribe button over there. I'd love to have you come back and join us for future videos. Your comments, of course, are always welcome. Your thumbs up really help maybe push my videos out there to help me with that algorithm i really appreciate you guys helping my channel to grow it just it is such an amazing feeling so thank you everyone so book of the month club so it was a hard hard decision they had some really good books this month i mean they do every month and sometimes i really struggle trying to find the one i want the one that jumps out at me and sometimes the one that jumps out at me isn't the one that I expected to at all. So anyway, they had a real tearjerker one this month and I don't know if I could read that one or if I would just sit and cry the whole time. But if you are into that, and I can imagine maybe if that happened to someone, you need to tell your story, you need to share, you need to get it off your chest so I can understand why someone would need to maybe write that story. I just don't know if I could handle it emotionally. So the theme of my video is that's what I do I read books I drink wine and I know things you know I really don't know things I just pretend so anyway today I am drinking and I opened this last week this is the witch's brew uh, from uh, Leland I, I think I said it wrong maybe it's Leland Na Cellars in Onema Michigan so this one was the spiced apple and I had this with the caramel apple from purple toad which was my overall winner but on a cold night and it's about 26 right now it's cold not that well I'm inside I'm not cold but I know it's cold outside so I heated some of this up I like this heated instead of cold it's like a spiced apple cider if you were having guests over and you were doing this maybe put a cinnamon stick in there or something like that cheers everyone Oh, it just smells so good. Cheers. Mm, it's nice. It's like spiced apple cider. You don't really taste the wine. It's like apples and cinnamon and clove and heat it up. It's just awesome. So anyway, that's what we're here for the Book of the Month Club. So you do get this nice box and of course, since I got two, I got a nice thick box this month. They always come with a bookmark for the book of the month and it says if you were a book you'd be a classic alrighty so we'll go over the books I didn't choose like I said it was a hard hard choice for me so the first one was a contemporary fiction it's we are the light by Matthew Quick and it's a moving tale of hope and redemption. An unlikely film production brings together a small town wrecked with grief. Life is full of guardian angels. Lucas Goodgame lives in majestic Pennsylvania, a quaint suburb that has been torn apart by a recent tragedy. Everyone in majestic sees Lucas as a hero. Everyone that is except Lucas himself insisting that his deceased wife Darcy visits him every night in the form of an angel Lucas spends his time writing writing letters to his former Junjian analyst Carl it is only when Eli an 18 year old man whom the community has ostracized begins camping out in Lucas's backyard that an unlikely alliance takes shape and the two embark on a journey to heal their neighbors and most important themselves. We Are the Light is an unforgettable novel about the quicksand of grief and the daily miracle 
of Love. The humorous, soul-bearing story of Lucas Goodgame offers an antidote to toxic masculinity and celebrates the healing power of art. In this tale that will stay with you long after the final page is turned, Quick reminds us that guardian angels are all around us, sometimes in the forms we least expect. I know, doesn't that one sound good? Alrighty, so book two is Magical Realism. It's called The Wilder Woman by Ruth Emmy Lang. One sister can see the future, the other people's memories. Together, can they unravel their mother's disappearance? Five years ago, Nora Wilder disappeared. The older of her two daughters, Zadie, should have seen it coming because she can literally see things coming, but not even her psychic abilities were able to prevent their mother from vanishing one morning. Zadie's estranged younger sister, Finn, can't see into the future but she has an uncannily good memory. So good that she remembers not only her own memories, but the echoes of memories other people have left behind. On the afternoon of her graduation party, Finn is seized by an echo more powerful than anything she's experienced before. A woman singing a song she recognizes, a song about a bird. When Finn wakes up alone in an aviary with no idea of how she got there, she realizes who the memory belongs to, Nora. Now it's up to Finn to convince her sister that not only is their mom still out there, but that she wants to be found. Against Zadie's better judgment, she and Finn hit the highway, using Finn's echoes to retrace Nora's footsteps and uncover the answer to the question that's been haunting them for years. Why did she leave? But the more time Finn spends in their mother's past, the harder it is for her to return to the present, to return to herself. As Zadie feels her sister start to slip away, she will have to decide what lengths she will go to to find their mother, knowing that if she chooses wrong, she could lose both of them for good. Alrighty, so book number three. It's the last party. Nobody likes the reflection in Mirror Lake when a dead body bobs to the surface and starts unveiling all their secrets. At midnight, one of them is dead. By morning, all of them are suspects. It's a party to end all parties, but not everyone is here to celebrate. On New Year's Eve, Rise Lord has a house full of guests. His vacation homes on Mirror Lake are a success and he's generously invited the village to drink champagne with their wealthy new neighbors. But by midnight, Rise will be floating dead in the freezing waters of the lake. On the New Year's Day, Fionn Morgan has a village full of specimens suspects. Their tiny community is her home, so the suspects are her neighbors, friends, and family. And Fionn has her own secrets to protect. While a lie uncovered at every turn, soon the question isn't who wanted Rice dead, but who finally killed him. In the village with many secrets, murder is just the beginning. Alrighty, and the next book. It's a literary fiction, Someday Maybe, by Onye no Noah Benelli. I am so sorry I messed up your name. Prep the tissues. This emotional, devastating, frank account of Greece's many faces will have you in your feelings. This is the one that's at Real Tear Jericho. Alrighty. So a stunning and witty debut novel about a young woman's emotional journey through unimaginable loss, pulled along by her tight-knit Nigerian family, 
a posse of new friends, and the love and laughter she shared with her husband. Here are three things you should know about my husband. He was the great love of my life, despite his penchant for going incommunicado. Number two, he was as far as I and everyone else could tell, perfectly happy, which is significant because, number three, on New Year's Eve, he committed suicide. And here's the one thing you should know about me. Number one, I found him. Bonus fact, I'm not okay. Alrighty, that last one, I almost started to cry right in the middle of it. I just cannot imagine going through that pain. But this is the ones I chose. So this one is a horror story. I don't think I've ever got a real horror story from Book of the Month, so I'm excited about this one. So this is White Horse by Erica T. Worth. This no-nonsense, heavy metal, obsessed indigenous woman is determined to confront family ghost, even if it kills her. Some people are haunted in more ways than one. Heavy metal, ripped jeans, Stephen King novels, and the occasional beer at the White Horse have defined urban Indian Carrie James' life so far. But when her cousin Debbie finds an old family bracelet that once belonged to Carrie's mother, it inadvertently calls up both her mother's ghost and a monstrous entity, and her willful ignorance about her past is no longer sustainable. Haunted by visions of her mother and hunted by this mysterious creature, Carrie must search for what happened to her mother all those years ago. Her father, permanently disabled from a car crash, can't help her. Her auntie Squeaker seems to know something, but she isn't eager to give it all up at once. Debbie's anxious to help, but her controlling husband keeps getting in her way. Carrie's journey towards the truth, long denied by both her family and law enforcement, forces her to confront her dysfunctional relationships, thoughts about a friend she lost in childhood, and her desire for the one thing she's always wanted but could never have. Alrighty, and for my extra book. Now, I didn't hold up those books. I'm so sorry. So, this was White Horse. And this one that I picked was Rose of Magic by Alice Hoffman. And I wanted to show you the one I got last month. This is a part of a four book series by Alice Hoffman. And so this is the prequel to Practical Magic and it's called Magic Lessons. But they say that all these books, you don't have to read them all, that they each stand well on their own, but I want to get all four. So anyway, I got this one last month, Magic Lessons. And this month we have The Rules of Magic, again by Alice Hoffman. This is a fantasy book and it's the second in the series of four. Alrighty, so this one says, a book about the coming of age, discovering your innermost self, and most of all, the unwavering belief that true love is really all that matters. From beloved author Alice Hoffman comes the spell-binding prequel to the bestseller, Practical Magic. Find your magic for the Owens family, love is a curse that began in 1620 when Maria Owens was charged with witchery for loving the wrong man. Hundreds of years later in New York City, at the cusp of the 60s, the whole world is about to change. Susanna Owens knows that her three children are diff dangerously unique. Difficult Franny, with skin as pale as milk and blood-red hair, shy and beautiful Jet, who can read other people's thoughts, and charismatic Vincent, who began looking for trouble on the day he could walk. From the start, Susanna sets down rules for her children. No walking in the moon night, no red shoes, no wearing black, no cats, no crows, 
no candles, no books about magic, and most importantly, never ever fall in love. But when her children visit their Aunt Isabel in the small Massachusetts town where the Owens family has been blamed for everything that has ever gone wrong, they uncover family secrets and begin to understand the truth about who they are. Back in New York City, each begins a risky journey to try to escape the family curse. The Owens children cannot escape love, even if they try, just they, as they cannot escape the pains of the human heart. The two beautiful sisters will grow up to be revered and sometimes feared. Aunts in practical magic, while Vincent, their beloved brother, will leave an unexpected legacy. Thrilling and exquisite, real and fantastical, the rules of magic is a story about the power of love, reminding us the only remedy for being human is to be true to yourself. Alrighty, so I'm excited to make my time or make myself make the time to read. I really want to get back to trying to get caught up at work, trying to get caught up on YouTube so that maybe by 1130 every night I can shut off my computer, pick up a book and just read and escape into this world. And I am really looking forward to reading this one. I mean, this one's a horror story about ghosts and I, I, want, I want to just kind of get so deep in a book that I don't want to put it down like if I'm reading on a Friday or Saturday night I want to get to a point in that book that I can't put it down that I want to read all night long if it takes to finish the book I just want that five-star book that I've been waiting for and then to do this Alice Hoffman series with these four books I am excited to pick up the other two and then like I said I need to set boundaries for myself. I need to find that balance. I want to find that time to just kind of unwind, relax at the end of the night, pick up a good book and read. So if you are a member of the Book of the Month Club, which book did you choose this month? I would love to hear your thoughts. If you did pick any of these books, if you've read that Alice Hoffman series, what do you think about them? And as always, I want to thank you guys again for stopping in, spending some time with me. Oh, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope everyone goes out, has a fantastic week. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Be kind. Be happy. Enjoy life. Have some fun. Love you guys so much. And we will see you in the next video. I'm going to have this while it's still warm. Love you guys. Bye-bye.